Hello and welcome to the SAP Business One Service Layer API Samples e-learning session. My name is Trinidad Martinez and I'm part of the SAP Business One Solution Architects team. The objective of this session is to learn about the capabilities of the service layer entities and actions and to show you some samples to help you get up to speed with the service layer. If you didn't do it yet, I recommend you to go over the SAP Business One Service Layer Introduction e-learning session before continuing this session to have a basic level of understanding of what is the service layer. In the first part of this session, I will present the SAP Business One Service Layer API reference. Then I will show you some sample use cases by calling service layer from a standard free API testing tools. Let's start with the service layer API reference. In the SAP Business One Service Layer Introduction e-learning session, we saw there is a document called Service Layer API Reference. In this session, we will examine the content of this document more in detail. OData uses the entity data model to describe the data exposed by an OData service. In order to help clients discover the shape of an OData service, the structure of its resources the known links between resources and the service operations exposed, a no data service may also expose a service metadata document. OData metadata documents describe the entity data model for a given service, which is the underlying abstract data model used by OData services to formalize the description of the resources it exposed. If you want to get more details on a standard OData terminology, you can refer to the OData CSDL document link proposed in this slide. SAP Business One Service Layer proposes an OData metadata document representing the service data model exposed by the SAP Business One Service Layer. You can access the Service Layer OData metadata document with the link provided in this slide. Please note that you will require a valid service layer connected session to be able to retrieve the metadata document. We will learn how to connect to the service layer in the upcoming slides. What information is covered in the SAP Business One service layer metadata document? The metadata document links the SAP Business One objects as entities and services as actions exposed by the service layer as well as the navigations and associations between them. The metadata document also reflects all the SAP Business One enumerations and user-defined fields. User-defined tables and user-defined objects available in your company database are represented as entities. As an example, we can see a screen capture with the definition of the SAP Business One object containing the set of business partner properties as well as a pointer to the key property for the business partner object. Let's now analyze in more detail the terminology of the OData metadata document and apply it to our specific service layer OData metadata document. First of all, what is an entity? Entities represent the individual instances of objects and an entity type defines the category to which an entity belongs. Entity properties describe a specific entity that will be uniquely identified by a key. In our service layer, we have objects like business partners, orders, and so on. These objects will be represented in a metadata document as entity types, while each instance of a business partner object will be an entity. The key of our business partner's entity type is the property car code and will be uniquely identifying a specific business partner entity. Many other properties like car name, car type, etc. will define the characteristics of a specific business partner entity. Almost all entities support create, retrieve, update, delete operations. In our service layer, our entities like business partners, orders and so on will expose then these operations. Here we can see the business partner's entity type in the service layer API reference document. It shows the operations available on the business partner's entity type. The HTTP commands 
get, post, patch, or delete are used. We can see to retrieve a specific business partner based on a key, we use the HTTP get command. To retrieve the list of all business partners, we use also the HTTP get command, but without any specific ID as a parameter. To create a business partner, we use the post command. To update a business partner, we use the patch command. And finally, to delete a business partner, we use the delete command. Depending on the operation, a body content may be required in the HTTP request. I will show you more details on this topic in the upcoming slides. In the current screen, yellow part in the middle, we can see a sample of the retrieve operation with the get command for business partners entity. We can see the URL ends with the name of the entity type business partners and has the specific car code of the entity we want to retrieve between parentheses. This slide shows another example of entity type. As you know, in SAP Business One, you can add your own objects as user-defined objects or also called UDOs. A UDO is comprised of one or more user-defined tables, also called UDTs, and each UDO must be registered in SAP Business One with one main user-defined table and optionally one or more child tables. Each user-defined object will be defined in the service layer metadata file as an entity type. The name of the UDO entity will be based on the name of the main UDO table. As with regular entities, you can perform CRUD operations on UDOs. In this example, we use the POST command to add an entry to the UDO my UDO doc. Let's see more or data terminology. In this case, actions. Actions expose and extend the set of operations beyond the create, retrieve, update, delete operations that are available on each specific entity or service. There are two types of actions, bound actions and global actions. Bound actions are linked to entities and expose for the specific entity other operations than create, retrieve, update, and delete. An example of a bound action is the close operation to close a specific order entity, so no more changes will be allowed on that order. Global actions represent specific operations other than CRUD operations that are not linked to an entity. In the SAP Business One service layer, global actions are mainly used to represent SAP Business One services. An example of a global action is the messages service, which exposes operations like send message, get inbox, and so on. Obviously, these operations cannot be represented with the standard CRUD operations. Please note that to consume actions, you always have to use the HTTP verb POST. Here we have an example of global action representing the messages service. SAP Business One service layer exposes some business processes via services instead of standard entity types. We can see some of the operations exposed for the message service like get inbox, get outbox, and get sent messages. These actions need to be requested via the HTTP command POST. A second example of actions is the close bound action supported by the order's entity type. Bound actions, as well as global actions, need to be requested with the HTTP POST command. Parameters will be exposed as part of the action definition. Associations and navigation properties are defined in the service layer metadata document. Associations define the relationship between two or more entity types. For example, in the case of the business partner's entity, a specific business partner may have several documents, such as orders and invoices, stored in a company database. In the metadata document, there is one association for the relationship between business partners and orders, and another association between business partners and invoices. Navigation properties will define the specific properties that will refer to the existing associations. 
In our business partner's entity type, for example, we have two navigation properties, one that links to the orders association and a second one that links to the invoices association. But why do we need navigations and associations? Let's continue with our example of an association between business partners and orders. If we need to retrieve the business partner details of a specific order, we can get the results in a single request because navigations and associations have been defined. We can use the command get orders of document number one slash business partner. Without this association, we will require two requests. A first one to get the details of the order number one, a second one to get the details of the business partner based on the car code obtained from the first request. More complex requests can be built based on the associations. This is shown in the second example of this slide, which gets the foreign name of the business partner directly. Let's talk about batch operations. You can send in a single HTTP request several operations with the batch operation command. A batch request is submitted as a single HTTP POST request to the batch URI. All operations will be listed in the body of the batch request. By default, each operation inside a batch request is handled as a single transaction request. You can choose to run all or some operations inside a batch request in a global transaction, meaning all operations will be committed or rolled back together by using the change set tag. If one of the operations inside a change set fails, the whole set of operations in the same change set will be rolled back. You can send, for example, a single batch request to create several business partners. Please note that change set allows you to create global transactions containing several operations, but the different operations cannot have context dependencies between them. You can use the service layer script engine for this purpose instead. Please check the specific session in this e-learning on the script engine topic. In order to understand how to access the service layer entities and services, we will have a look to some API testing tools that can be used to easily have our first experience with service layer. There are many API testing tools. In this slide, we list two, Postman and Advanced REST Client. You can download them for free at the provided URL. The following examples use the Postman tool but the advanced REST client is similar to use for the same kind of testing. Our first call to the service layer is the login operation. Before you perform any operation in service layer, you first need to log into the service layer. To log in, we send a POST HTTPS request to the service layer URL. The URL is composed of HTTPS, plus the service layer load balancer server name and port, plus the root path of the service layer, which is slash b1s slash v1, followed by the login operation. If the login operation is successful, you will see the status is 200 OK. The response of the login request contains two cookies in the response header one with the name B1 session and a second one with the name root ID to ensure the load balancer stickiness. To make subsequent requests after login, the cookies B1 session and root ID are mandatory and must both be set in each request header. In the case of Postman, the B1 session and root ID are automatically managed by Postman and we cannot directly see them in the screen capture. If we look at the response body of the login request, we will see it contains a link to the metadata document, the session ID that has been just opened for our session, and the SAP Business One version that we are currently logging in. We can also see a session timeout parameter with a value of 30 minutes, that is the default value. 
You can find out all details about the login operation and all available service layer operations in the service layer user manual document. Please check SAP Business One service layer introduction session on DC Learning to find out how to access the user manual document. Once you are logged into the service layer, you can start requesting and modifying data via the service layer API. In this slide, we want to show you the details of how to retrieve a business partner's entity with key equal to C20,000. We send a GET request with the same root path as for the login command we saw before, but we just replace the login operation by the business partner's entity type and the specific C20,000 car code key parameter. As we are doing a GET request to retrieve data, we do not require a body. If the specific business partner's entity we request is available in our company database, the response status will be set to 200 OK, and the response body will contain all the properties of the business partner's entity filled with the corresponding values. Please note that Postman automatically includes the B1 session and root ID cookies, so you don't have to care about them. If you write a client application in Windows desktop mode, not in browser access mode, do not forget to add the cookie item in the HTTP header. Otherwise, you may receive the invalid session error. If your application is written in JavaScript and runs in browser access mode, you do not need to set the cookie each time you send a request, since most web browsers are able to handle the cookie transparently. In our previous example, we requested an existing business partner entity with the get HTTP command. In this slide, we want to show you the post command in order to create a new business partner's entity. To create a business partner's entity, we will use the post HTTP command on the service layer root path plus the business partner operation. We will not specify any parameters in the URL. All details to be set on the business partner's entity to be created will be included in the request body with JSON format. In this specific case, we just specify car code, car name, and car type properties. In case of successful creation, the response status will be 201 created. The response body contains the full set of properties of the business partner's entity with the corresponding values. Default or null values are assigned by service layer for the values non-specified in the request. Now let's have a look to the delete command to delete an existing business partner's entity. To delete an existing business partner's entity, we use the delete HTTP command on the service layer root path plus business partners and the parameter specifying the specific car code of the business partner to be deleted. We do not require any body information in the request because we are providing the key information of our business partner's entity in the URL directly. If the business partner's entity exists in our company database and the deletion is possible, the response status will be 204 no contents, with no body content returned. Please note the service layer follows the same rules as the SAP Business One client regarding the deletion of entities. Therefore, it is not possible to delete a business partner's entity that has already some documents assigned. We have now completed the SAP Business One service layer API samples e-learning session. I hope this session has fulfilled your expectations and you are now able to connect to your SAP Business One service layer API to retrieve and modify some data. Thank you for your attendance and see you in a following session.